Making aviation green is a huge challenge. Flying is such a big part of our lives and we have to balance that with the fact that it contributes hugely to global warming. We've left it a long time. We've now got a very short window within which we need to get emissions from this sector down to nearly zero. We need to be throwing everything at this problem that we can think of. There are two big reasons why aviation presents a unique challenge in terms of climate change. The first is that more and more people are flying and the second is that flying remains almost totally dependent on fossil fuels. We haven't got green technologies available yet for the aviation sector. And that's roughly equivalent to the total emissions from the UK and Germany combined. In 2019, airlines carried around 4.5 billion passengers on flight, and we're really expecting that to grow. Globally, just 1% of the population, many of whom are frequent flyers, generate half of all emissions from the aviation sector. There is no silver bullet to get aviation to become green, but rather a whole set of different options, each with pros and cons. Winglets are vertical looking extensions that we've uh, added at the end of the wings and what they do is to increase the efficiency of the wings. These winglets were inspired by birds and we are currently looking at uh, much more features from bird wings and bird flight and incorporating them into our aircraft. The aviation industry is really good at making itself more efficient. Through a mixture of improving technology and learning to fly the aircraft more efficiently, if you look at uh, history, we are improving the efficiency of our aircraft at about 2% per year. That uh, is definitely very little and it cannot continue forever, so we definitely need to uh, change our aircraft fuels. Jet engines at the moment run on fuel made from fossil fuels. So it's really important that we find ways to replace that in aircraft. Biofuels are a form of fuel which is made from plant-based materials. The one possible example is vegetable oil, which exists in very large quantities and uh, can be transformed into a biofuel. For instance, if we were to replace the entire jet fuel used in the UK with biofuels, we would be using about 68% of the land that we currently use to grow our food. Another possibility is what we call e-fuels, which is scrubbing the carbon dioxide from the air and putting it through chemical processes that turn it back into jet fuel again. So it turns into a circular process where it's all going into the atmosphere and then coming back out again. One big disadvantage of e-fuels is that they are very expensive, not only in terms of their cost, but also in terms of the energy that they use. Hydrogen is a gas that if you react it with the oxygen in the air can release a lot of energy. That makes it potentially a really good aviation fuel, but it's not without its problems. Uh, for a start, we can't store it in the current designs of aeroplanes. Secondly, at the moment, about 95% of our hydrogen comes from fossil fuels. Hydrogen is very um, explosive, which poses uh, serious uh, safety considerations. Designing, manufacturing and licensing uh, hydrogen power aircraft is something that is bound to take decades and cost uh, in the regions of tens of billions of pounds. Electric aeroplanes are still incredibly rare. So I'm one of the very few people in the world who's had a chance to pilot an electric aeroplane. Whilst it's possible to make an electric car that works well, if you put those same batteries into an aeroplane, it's simply too heavy to fly. There's no doubt that it's going to take a lot of resources, particularly energy. It's going to cost a lot and it's going to require a huge amount of effort from business and from government working together 
with the cooperation and support of the public. It would be great if there was one kind of fix-it-all solution that we could put in place for this sector. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to do everything we can think of and it's all probably going to be quite challenging. A lot of the technologies that we need for greening aviation are still some decades apart. They are very expensive and the electric energy that would be required uh, from a renewable source will also be uh, very expensive and time-consuming to set in place. Alongside that, just as importantly, we're probably going to have to fly less because we've left it so long that just as isn't time left. The aircraft coming off the production line today will probably still be flying in 2050, which is the date by which we have to be at net zero emissions. We need to be building the kind of society in which there are good alternatives to flying. So if you choose to take a holiday uh, domestically in your own country, that will start to create that kind of demand that will help make a more sustainable future. Do you fly? <laughs> <laughs> I last took a flight before my daughter was born and she's going to be a teenager this summer.